Hello there, Guardians, and welcome to Reality Check. So, how many of you have been donning your space cloaks and blasting your way around the solar system in Bungie's latest offering, Destiny? If you have been, then your quest to rid the solar system of the alien force threatening to extinguish mankind should result in some pretty scenic stop-offs around our solar system. Namely, the Moon, Mars, and of course, Venus. But not quite as we know them today. They have all been made livable, terraformed by mankind. But what if you were to actually visit these places today? How do the celestial playgrounds of destiny compare to the real life environments? And you know, this topic is kind of perfect for the show Reality Check because the game is sci-fi and this show is about science. In fact, you might say that making this episode is, is, is my job. Welcome to your solar system, centuries from now. Long since Earth's golden age has ended. Long since we colonized our neighboring planets and were beaten back again by a mysterious darkness. Destiny takes place 700 years in the future. Everything has gone a bit post-apocalyptic following a previous period of prosperous exploration known as the Golden Age. During this time of plenty and technological advancement, mankind successfully terraformed and colonized its three closest celestial neighbors with help from the mysterious Traveler, a giant city-sized floating sphere thing. You can get a close look at the Destiny versions of Venus, Mars and the Moon by either, you know, playing the game or alternatively by jumping onto your space internet browsers and space navigating your way to www.destinyplanetview.com. It's a Google Street View kind of an experience produced by the game makers, but nonetheless, a great way to cast your eye over some of the environments. And if you check out Destiny's take on Venus, as well as the ruins of previous civilizations, you can't help but notice the jungles. Yep, beautiful tropical green jungles. That means we can assume an oxygen rich atmosphere, surface temperatures averaging around 30 degrees Celsius and similar air pressure to Earth. But what about real world Venus? Well, if you were to be instantly transported to the surface right now, what would you experience? Well, for starters, it's a little hotter than it is in Destiny. Venus has an average temperature of 460 degrees C. That's hot enough to melt lead, by the way, making it by far the hottest planet in our solar system. Yep, hotter than Mercury, even though that guy is closer to the sun. Why? Well, because of Venus's thick atmosphere of CO2. This runaway greenhouse effect traps almost all the heat radiated away from the surface, further warming the planet. The whole of Venus is basically wrapped in a super thick duvet. This also results in an intense surface pressure of 91 atmospheres. So that's 91 times the pressure on the surface of Earth. That's roughly the same as you'd find 1,000 meters beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. Also, the clouds on Venus are so thick that the only way to really see through them is to use radar imaging. Oh, and it rains sulfuric acid. A lot. Yep. There's also the bizarre fact that a day on Venus is actually longer than a year. Yep, you heard me correctly. Now, as extreme as these conditions are though, it hasn't stopped mankind landing on the planet's surface. Not with a person, mind you. Dear God, no, that would be cruel. However, the Soviet Union did send a number of space probes which successfully landed and even captured photos of the planet's surface. Although the craft only lasted a couple of hours before, you know, melting. Okay, now it's time for the red planet. Now, in the world of the real, Mars is no holiday destination. Surface temperatures vary from a damn chilly minus 143 degrees C at the winter polar caps to highs of up to 35 degrees C at the equator. There is also no magnetic field, which combined with a wafer-thin atmosphere results in dangerous levels of ionizing radiation bombarding the surface. And to add insult to injury, what does pass for an atmosphere on Mars is composed almost entirely of CO2 with just a whiff of oxygen, 0.16% by the way. All this makes Mars a decidedly inhospitable place. When you first make Planetfall and Destiny, however, you might conclude that not much has changed. As with Venus, there are signs of human colonization during the aforementioned Golden Age, but in terms of environment, you might conclude that Mars doesn't look that drastically different. It's still red due to the hematite dust covering the planet's surface, rust essentially, but on closer inspection, it is clearly a changed place. 
Crucially, there is plant life on the ground. Now, this would be impossible on the real Martian surface due to all the ionizing radiation, so some pretty intense terraforming must have taken place, increasing the thickness of the atmosphere and also altering its chemical makeup to include much more oxygen. OK, finally, let's take a look at the Earth's closest celestial buddy, our very own satellite, the Moon. The actual factual challenges facing any lunar visitors basically come down to the next to non-existent atmosphere. This means that surface temperatures are entirely dependent on exposure to the sun. During the day, they can rise as high as 123 degrees Celsius and at night drop as low as minus 233. In Destiny Land, as with Mars, the moon looks very similar to what we are used to in real life, aside from the old habitation buildings littering the surface. Unlike Mars, however, there appears to be no indigenous life or anything growing on the surface at all, suggesting more limited terraforming. There does appear, however, to be more of an atmosphere. This can be seen as your craft comes into land. Look, clearly clouds. From what I can tell though, this does seem to be the only major change in the environment on the moon, making it the most similar to real life of all the locations you'll journey to in Destiny. So then, let me know what you thought of this week's reality check. Do remember though that a lot of this is based on supposition and guesswork because it's not as if Bungie have released specifications of their celestial destinations. So I've done my best job. But if you think I've missed anything or made a mistake, do let me know in the comments down below or by hitting me up on Twitter at CamFrazRob. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. See you next week.